Good evening, Conroe ISD family. My name is Curtis Nall. I'm the superintendent of Conroe ISD. I'd like to welcome you to this, our April 27th update number six uh, here for the school district. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hopefully this message finds you and your family uh, happy and healthy uh, as we deal with this ongoing situation in our community. Uh, it's great to visit with you once again. It's been quite a, a couple of weeks since we last visited. I was looking through my notes and so much has happened uh, over these last few weeks. And, and I know there's a lot of hardship out there, but you know, we, we try to really focus through these messages on the good things and, and what's going on and how can we um, you know, get through this and, and help to find hope and help to find um, the positiveness. And uh, one of the things that really struck me as I was looking at the calendar today was that May 1st is at the end of this week. And, and I remember thinking when this whole thing started, we were coming out of spring break and it was March and uh, the, the whole thing started, I was thinking, wow, May 1st felt so far away. And the more things were closed and, and the more we were kind of in this isolation mode, um, the, the heavier it felt. But for me today to see that May 1st is this week um, that made me feel good this week. I was like, wow, the, we, we are making progress. And, and day by day, as we talked about last time, two weeks ago, we don't know exactly when everything will be back to normal. But what we know is that today we're one day closer than we were yesterday. And when you think when we get to May, we're like, wow, we're, we're one month closer. We, we're going to make it through April this week. And then we're going to be getting closer and closer to, um, to normal. So uh, hopefully that makes you feel a little better today and, and you, you know, congratulations. We've almost made it through April. We're going to do that this week and then we'll begin to tackle May uh, as well. And we last, last or two weeks ago when we visited, um, we, we shared a few different stories. And one of those stories was about the kindness rocks. And you remember uh, we talked about Cambry and the young lady who shared with our staff about kindness rocks. And I showed you a few rocks that um, had been delivered to my house. And uh, s over these last two weeks, I've heard so many great stories about these kindness rocks. Um, my family and I, we took some of the rocks that were delivered to our house and we left them, uh, as we did our walks through the neighborhood, we left them in the neighborhood. And when we went back two days later, they had all been picked up. And I thought, wow, it made me feel really good to think about the fact that somebody else, one of my neighbors that I probably don't even know, was walking through the neighborhood and saw a rock that said hope or saw a rock that said love or everything's going to be okay. And they felt compelled to pick that up because it made them feel better. That was really neat. And, and I've seen so many pictures that people have emailed me of their family sitting around a table and painting these rocks. And, and then uh, just today I was, I was noticing in the, the Conroe Courier and the Woodlands Villager that there was a story about all the rocks that had been uh, placed out in the neighborhoods, really kind of brightening the walking path. So uh, what a neat gesture and, and thank you for participating in that. You know, we talk about how kindness matters and it really does. And that's just a perfect example of, you know, sometimes just sitting down and thinking about how to make the day for others better um, can go a long way. And, and those kindness rocks were a neat thing. And, and I'll remind you, that was a great idea that we got from a fifth grader. So we can learn so much from kids. Um, when, we, when we as adults sort of stop and listen to them, we can learn so much. And so um, thank you to all of our students who inspire us every day um, to try to be better, to make us better parents, to make us better adults. Thank you for, for doing that. Now, there's been uh, a lot of news since we last talked. Uh, first of all, the governor came out and he did close schools for the remainder of the school year. Now, what he did not do is he did not in the school year and send us into summer break already. That, that's not what he said. He said very clearly that schools will be closed for face-to-face -face instruction, meaning we won't have students in our buildings for the remainder of the year. But our school year still moves forward. We've done a great job of transitioning into our distance learning, and, and we commend you for that, we commend our parents and students for locking in on that, our teachers for the great work that you're doing, and that will continue. The governor did not give us the option um, nor did he make the decision to end the school year early. So our last day of school is still May 28th. That is not going to change. Uh, so we will continue our distance learning uh, up until that point. And so um, continue to do your work. Now today there was more news from the governor and hopefully uh, you may have had a chance to watch his press conference or um, see some notes from it. But I'll, I'll share with you a little bit about what I heard. 
um, today. First, I, I think he did a wonderful job. Uh, Governor Abbott, I think, has been uh, very smart and calculated uh, in his decision-making process through this, and he's listening to a lot of smart people um, that we have in this great state. And he shared with us part of his reopening plan for the state of Texas. And, uh, and I'm sure there are those out there that wish there was more open, and I'm sure we all do. Um, but this was another bit of good news for me. It made me feel good. It made me excited and hopeful for the future to hear um, how things are going to begin to, to reopen on Friday and, and as we continue through to get through phase one and get to mid-May and potentially see phase two. There were a few things that stood out to me here. And I think we all have to remember these is this is a process. So we're gonna enter into phase one on Friday and with the hopes that mid-May, we can move to phase two. But if we see a spike in the virus over these next few weeks, we won't get to phase two and we could potentially go backwards. So I just wanna remind you and encourage you to continue the social distancing. It's working, we're seeing great examples. That, that's why we are where we are because you've done such a good job over these last few weeks of following social distancing, wearing a mask if that's what you choose to do, you know, just not being around a lot of people if you don't have to be. You know, when you go to the store, don't take the whole family, one person in, get in and get out as quickly as you can. All those things are going to continue for really months and months. That's not gonna change for us. But if we do all of that well, then that means we can continue to open up more and more things in our economy. So um, please do the right thing. We don't wanna rush out um, just because the governor says on Friday that we can begin to do more things. We don't all want to rush out and do that and cause a spike in, in infections. And then we see our hospitals fill up and then our leaders feel the need to uh, bring us back into more isolation. So I encourage you to please be smart, um, but be excited about it. I'm excited about it. I know you are too. I'm sure you are um, excited to hear about it. Now, one of the things that really um, has had me perked up since I watched that press conference three and a half hours ago, whenever it was today, is the idea that graduation uh, is still on the table for us and um, in May. And we've been hopeful about that uh, the entire time that we've been talking. We've been hopeful that it can still happen. And what I was concerned about today is that we may hear something to make us think that it couldn't happen, but we didn't hear that today. Uh, what we heard today um, were some different rules about occupancy percentages. We read through the Open Texas book, which gave some rules as far as movie theaters and churches about how people needed to be, need to be seated. What we don't know yet is exactly how those rules apply to the pavilion. So uh, I've been in constant conversation this afternoon with the pavilion, and they are working on all their plans, and we continue to consider all options. And so I'll uh, ask Andrew to put up our, our current plan for graduation. So this is, you can see our current plan um, starting on Thursday, May 21st, the Woodlands High School will be at the Pavilion, Oak Ridge on the 22nd, and then Hawk at Wood Forest Bank Stadium on the 23rd, Caney Creek High School on Tuesday, May 26th, in the morning of Tuesday, May 26th, and then Conroe High in the evening on May 26th, and then our final gra graduation would be College Park on May 27th. Now, let's talk a little bit about these plans. When we say current plan, I think we all understand in living through this process that everything we do is fluid. Anything can change at any moment. Um, what we try to do is make the best decision in every moment that we can, uh, and if we can make it better, we will, and, and any changes that have to happen. So one thing that I would note on this plan that could change, you, if you recall, Caney Creek's High School original graduation date was May 23rd up at Sam Houston. Um, the, when the Sam Houston um, arena closed to us, we had to move Caney Creek down to the pavilion. Um, the only option we had at that point was to put them on a Tuesday morning. Uh, it's now looking possible, and, I, and we're not, I'm not breaking this news tonight for, for all our Caney Creek Panthers out there, but uh, I wanna tell you that we are working with the pavilion to try to secure your day back to Saturday to see if we can get you on that Saturday in the pavilion instead of at Sam Houston. So 
Um, you would likely be on Saturday morning that day. We would not want to necessarily do a three o'clock graduation at the pavilion as you were scheduled to do at Sam Houston because it would be pretty hot. That is an outdoor venue, but possibly to go on that Saturday morning. So we're working on that right now. Now for our other schools, um, we are working with the pavilion to, to determine exactly what will their capacity be. So if uh, we know that the pavilion holds about 15,000 people. Now, when we get to the middle of May, hopefully we are, as a state of Texas, we're in phase two of this plan. And the governor had mentioned a 50% occupancy for businesses when we're in phase two. We don't know yet if that applies to the pavilion. Um, you know, uh, you can do the math there. If it's 15,000 and we can do 50%, we're at 7,500 uh, people could be in the pavilion. But the, the interesting thing about that is if they still have the, the guidelines in where we have to skip two seats between everybody or we have to skip rows, then we could actually not fit that many people into the pavilion under those rules. So we're, we're still playing it by ear to determine exactly what uh, the capacity of the pavilion will be. We're working with them. We'll be working with them all week. Hopefully by the end of this, uh, this week, we'll have more answers and we'll be able to come back to you. Now we've, we've been talking to our high school principals about what do we do if we don't have enough capacity in the pavilion to get the class, the full class and parents into the building. And you're really left with two options at that point. You can, um, either say no parents can be present. We do stream all of our graduations live online. So parents could watch online or we could limit the number of graduates that are in a ceremony so that we could have parents there. Now the feedback we got from the high school principals, which, you know, they got their feedback directly from the seniors was, hey, we want our parents to be present, which makes all the sense in the world to me. Um, but as we move forward, that's why I say this is our current plan, because if we have to adjust because of the capacity of the pavilion, we may be breaking, um, especially these larger schools, into two different graduation ceremonies. That's a possibility. So um, I just put that out there so that you're aware that if we come back to you in a week or 10 days and say, okay, here's the new current plan and we're showing a break or a morning graduation and an evening graduation for, um, for our bigger high schools, you'll understand why that is. We want to have parents in the building. We will, we will live stream it. Um, we know that we won't be able to get as many people into the building as we typically do. Um, for our big school graduations, it's not uncommon to have 12 or 13,000 people at the pavilion. We know that there's no way that will be possible. Um, best case scenario would be 7,500, which we know that that's not even going to happen either. It's going to be less than that. So uh, it's not going to be perfect. And we're already working with our um, high school principals to develop plans to make it work, meaning speeches to be delivered via video instead of live and in person. That way, um, the if we did have multiple ceremonies, they're able to be um, you know, similar and, and everybody gets to hear the messages that, that shared. So we're, we're working through all those things. It's a constant fluid uh, situation. So just, I encourage you to um, you know, kind of stay with us on that and know that, that we're doing the best we can and we'll continue to share. So that, that was really the biggest thing that I heard today it was about graduations. And so I wanted to put it right here at the front because I know many of you are probably, if you're logged in today, um, as we've done these over the last, the previous five Facebook Live, there's been a lot of uh, times people would log in because they want to know about school closures. Well, we know that that's already been decided. So I knew that many of you logging in today were probably here for graduation information. I wanted to just get it right out there up front. Uh, right at the beginning. So just know that we'll continue to share more information with you um, as we keep going. Seniors, hang in there. You're doing great. Uh, and talking to your high school principals, I know they're, they are planning a lot of different things to try to make this as special for you as, as they can. Uh, it's not going to be a typical end of the year. You know that. Um, but it can still be special. And, and that's our vow to you is we're going to try to make it special. And there are going to be some things happen for you that haven't happened for previous senior classes. And so uh, we take the good with the bad and, um, and we, we just try to find a way to, to enjoy the moment. So uh, continue to, to make sure you get your credits and do what you need to do to finish the school year strong. Now, uh, in our last Facebook Live, one of the, the challenges that I put out there was um, to support the food bank. You know, people were asking, how can we help? What can we do? We want to help our community. But what can we do? Well, 
I put it out there and I, and I told you that I shared with Miss Allison Hewlett, who is the CEO of the food bank, that we were gonna, we were gonna make a difference that night for the food bank. And I wanna tell you, Conroy SD, you made a difference that night for the food bank. Since we made our presentation two weeks ago and you, may, and you dedicated yourself to helping where you could and where it was appropriate for your family, um, over a thousand families uh, have received food through a mobile uh, distribution site that we did at Conroe High School. We've given over 4,500 buddy backpacks to families to go home to feed them over the weekend. And that, that, that equates to over 20,000 meals. And since we did uh, our last Facebook Live, 485,000 meals have been supported by the donations you made since our last Facebook Live. Thank you for making such a big difference in the lives of our community. It's amazing. Uh, so proud of everybody and thankful uh, for those of you that can give. And once again, we say for those of you that are, that are not in a position to give and you may be in this for the first time in your life, a position to receive, that's okay. That's why we're here. That, that's what we do as a great community, as a great family. When you need to be picked up, it's our pleasure to pick you up. And we know that when you're back and you're able to support someone else, you will do that in the future. Um, now, we, we also made a call last time for volunteers. Well, since we made our volunteer call, we filled up all of the potential volunteer slots um, that the food bank had. But after that, uh, Governor Abbott sent some National Guard members, Texas National Guard members, I think 40, uh, came to our food bank to help them distribute food. So the food bank didn't need all of the volunteers at the moment. I think they actually uh, canceled some of your visits. And so uh, while we have the National Guard there doing the work, uh, then we don't need the volunteers, but they won't be here forever. So uh, keep a heads up when, when those folks go back home, then we'll need the volunteers to come back because we have a lot of food there that needs to be distributed and get out to the right people. Now, along the, the idea of food, what an appropriate time of year for this Friday, May 1st, to be School Lunch Hero Day. This is a day that we celebrate our child nutrition workers across the state of Texas. And we are so thankful for our child nutrition workers in Conroe ISD. Just through this crisis, they have made and delivered almost half a million meals. Uh, we will cross that half a million meal threshold this week. And so we say thank you to all of the great child nutrition workers. And what, what I love, and I didn't know this, I learned this today, I was looking at their Facebook post. Um, we've all heard the, the phrase lunch lady. They refer, they refer to themselves as lunch ladies and food dudes. So we say a big heartfelt thank you to all of our lunch ladies and food dudes that are out there in Conroe ISD that have really sustained our community over these last few weeks. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. Um, it's a great opportunity on Friday if you wanna show your thanks, maybe through social media posts. Uh, if you wanted to make cards or posters to say thank you, uh, you, can don't, you could bring those up on the Thursday afternoon food distribution. We have our 10 sites that we distribute food. Um, but even if you wanted to roll through and you, you didn't need to pick up food, but you just wanted to uh, offer a letter of thanks or, or a card of thanks, you can, will be a place for you to make that donation and we'll safely uh, take those from you and make sure that um, we're not passing any diseases. We're doing it appropriately. Um, Nurse Robertson will, will help us do that appropriately, but we want you to be able to show your thanks um, for them. So we're just perfect timing um, that the first Friday of May happens to be School Lunch Hero Day, and we're thankful um, for all of our child nutrition workers. Now, along, along those lines of helping other people, uh, I've been asked by many, um, so now what? What can we do now um, to help others? If the, you know, we've, we've helped the food bank, and you can still help the food bank, and you can still help Interfaith or Community Assistance Center, all those different things. But we have a new way in Conroe ISD that you can help people if you're led to do so, and it's called the Proposity app. And uh, I'll, I'll show you here on my phone, this is the Proposity app. And what this is, is uh, when our counselors or our social workers work with families and receive needs. So they, they've worked with families, they've tried to tie them into um, different community organizations, but they get to a point where a family just has more needs than, than different organizations can help support them. 
that's when they go to the Perposity app and they input that information. And so you, you can go through and you can follow Conroe ISD. So if you go to the Perposity app and download Perposity, um, once you have an account, you can go in and you can follow Conroe ISD. And you think, well, you know, I want to give back to some type of charity, but I always want to make sure that, you know, where I'm giving my money is really, you know, it's vetted in some way. Who's paying attention to it? Is it really staying in my community? This is a way, if you choose to do so, you can know that it's been vetted by our staff. Our counselors are working with the families. We put the needs directly in. You go in and you make your purchases directly on the app. So let's say uh, it says that a, uh, maybe a young boy uh, needs a new pair of shoes and it's asking for $35 for a new pair of shoes. You can go in and you can make that donation directly on the app it will go to Amazon and purchase those shoes and then ship them directly to the family. You, that's all you have to do is make your purchase. And then on the back side, we make sure that that item gets directly to the family. So if you go in, uh, you'll see different, different items that are in the app today and they change and they get updated. Uh, some are for gift cards. Like I said, some might be for shoes or books or clothing, um, whatever it may be, but know that our counselors are the ones that manage it and our social workers. And you can know that if you make the purchases in here, your money is being spent on exactly um, what you want it to be spent on. You get to choose um, what you give money for. So if you're thinking or, or you're trying to determine what's a way uh, that you can help other people, you can see the Proposity information there. You can download it um, and, and go directly to the Proposity app, Apple, Android, either way, and, and you can make those donations. It's very easy to do. Uh, I'm, gone through and, and it's, it's easy to click and go through and make payment. And so would encourage you to do that if that's something that you feel like you would like to do for other folks. Now, let's talk about where we are today as a school district. Today, we continue to be on essential operations mode. And what that means is we have very few people in our buildings. Uh, we have a, a skeleton crew of maintenance and custodial staff. We have just those child nutrition workers that are in making food. And then very rarely and occasionally do we have any other staff in our buildings. Here very soon, along with the governor's plan as we fought, try to follow his plan in the school district, we will be moving to limited operations. Well, what, what does that mean and what does that mean to you? Well, it means that we will start to see staff back in the buildings on a very limited level. So we will not be fully staffed in our buildings, but we may see um, a few people working in the office during the day, staggered at different times so they can have social distance, but they begin to come in. Uh, for our staff that's out there, for teachers, it may mean that uh, as we get into May, you will be allowed to come back into your classroom. You, you may have things that you need to do. You might be changing schools next year and need to pack your room. Those are things that are coming into the future, but they'll be further into May. For parents, um, you may have items that you need to drop off. You might have band instruments, or you may have checked out technology from us, and at some point you're gonna need to drop that back off and turn it in, textbooks. So when we get into May, we will have those opportunities. Along those same lines, it's very likely that your students have items in the schools that you need access to. Once again, we'll, we will begin that process once we get into May, likely May 11th would be the first times that you might see that. All that information will come from your campuses. Uh, we wanna make sure that if we're gonna allow people into the buildings to come in to say, go to your athletics locker to pick up your track cleats, uh, we wanna make sure that once you've done that, we clean the building properly so that whoever comes in the next day knows that they're walking into a clean building. So uh, we need to work on our procedures to make sure we do that the right way and we'll do so. Um, Looking ahead to this summer, one of the things that closing the rest of the school year does is it changes our summer school. So we won't have our traditional summer school that, that we've always had. Uh, it will look very different. Our secondary summer school will start um, early in the summer, but it will be 100% online. So uh, registration hopefully will open for that uh, within the next week or so. Uh, you can go online and check that out. We'll have uh, a limited catalog so we won't have all the classes we've always had and it will be an online summer school. Our elementary summer school is going to push till later into the summer. Likely to be online if it's appropriate by the end of the summer to have students in the building occasionally for a small group or something then we may have that happen but um, 
but it'll be pushed to later in the summer, not right here at the very beginning of summer. Uh, we're, we are looking ahead to next year. It's one of the things that brings us the most, most joy is to think about next year when all these students return to the school building. Uh, we're so excited about that. Um, know that we are right now evaluating all of our procedures. Um, we're buying all the hand sanitizer we can buy. We're buying all the e-misting machines that, that we use to come in and spray rooms or spray buses to clean them. We've been in the process of buying all those things um, really for the last two months. So we, we've put placed our orders months ago to make sure that we're ready with hand washing stations and everything that we may need for next school year to be safe. So um, just know that we understand it's gonna look different. We're gonna have changes to procedures. Exactly what they'll be, we don't know, but we are gearing up and we'll be ready uh, when next school year comes and we're allowed to have students back in the building to make sure that it's a safe place, not only for our students, but for our staff also. New student registration is open. So if you are moving into our community or if you have a new pre-K or kinder student, uh, that's going to come to us next year for the first time. That registration is open. If you look, scroll through our Facebook page, you will see uh, some videos from our pre-K registration nights that have will walk you through the registration process. So you can just go and watch those videos. Um, it, it's a fairly user-friendly system, but sometimes you do, you just need somebody to help you. So um, you can watch that video, and it may help you scroll through that information as well. Now. Next Tuesday, we're gonna be right back here next Tuesday for another Facebook Live, and it's going to be our salute to education. So annually, uh, Conroe ISD works alongside with TSTA Conroe to uh, celebrate our teachers within the school district. So we celebrate our teachers of the year from every campus, and we celebrate an ambassador award winner from every campus. That's somebody that is like a, a, a great person for the campus culture. Uh, for that building. Then we also salute our uh, friends of education. And these may be community members or businesses that come in and, and do a lot of great work. And we, we would typically recognize all these people at a large ceremony and we give them certificates and take pictures. And then at the end of that ceremony, we would typically um, read some essays that were written by our teachers of the year. We will name our elementary teacher of the year for the entire school district and our secondary teacher of the year for the entire school district. We will name those winners next week live on our Facebook Live, our Salute to Education, Conroe ISD, TSTA Conroe. We will do that live. So if you have um, friends and you want, you want to see their names, we'll scroll the names of all of our award winners. Uh, we wish that we could come together to celebrate everybody, but one of the neat things about this is um, we typically have to limit attendance at this banquet because it becomes too full and we can't, we can't seat as many people that would like to be present and we never get to include our community in this process. So while we're sad that we can't be together, we will appreciate the fact that this year we're going to get to share this with our entire community and, and everyone will get to be a part of it. So we are really excited about that for next week. Uh, it'll be Facebook Live. Once again, that's going to be on Tuesday, 6 o'clock right back here, our normal, our normal procedure, and we'll celebrate uh, our Salute to Education next Tuesday. All right, I'm going to roll through uh, and talk about um, a few things here that have come in on questions. So some great questions. Uh, is graduation mandatory? No, graduation is a ceremony. Uh, you do not have to attend graduation to get your diploma. So uh, if we do have graduation, uh, it will be, it's optional for students and every year for a variety of reasons. We have students that choose not to attend graduation. That's perfectly okay. Um, the campus will work with you to make sure that you can get your diploma and, and you can move forward. Um, other graduation questions, I'll try to catch them here while we're talking about that. Um, why wouldn't we just wait till July for graduation? Would that be safer? I don't know if that would be safer, uh, truthfully. What we've seen right now and talking to our uh, health and medical experts, we've, we've seen that um, the trend kind of start to go down. It's impossible to know exactly what that trend's going to look like in July. It's possible that we could see a spike in July. So um, one of the things that we committed to, to all of you, um, you know, early through this process as we started talking was 
the first window that opened for graduation, we were going to take it. And if that window opens in May, we will take it in May. Uh, now, if we get more information from the state or the governor's strike force comes back to us and tells us, you know, puts some different rules on us that won't allow us to graduate in May, then we, we would push to our July dates. But if that window does open uh, in May, we are going to take that opportunity. And it is, once again, it's optional. And if you don't, you know, you don't feel safe to do so, then certainly um, you would not have to be, you would not have to be present. Um, have we thought about rescheduling proms? Our proms have been canceled. They were not postponed, they were canceled. And, and there, we have, there's a multitude of reasons why about that. Um, one is the venues. Uh, I know that there are some local districts that are trying to reschedule proms and I hope to goodness that their plan works. Um, one benefit that they have is that they have a venue with, that a school district owned. We don't own a, a venue like that as a school district. Uh, and our high schools really uh, aren't set up to host a prom, especially later in the summer. But the other reality, and, and once again, I hope that other uh, districts' plans work for them and everything goes well. The health experts that I've talked to have told me it is not going to be appropriate um, even later this summer to put seven, eight, nine hundred kids into one room on a dance floor, packed in close and tight, that is just what happens at a prom when you dance. Uh, that's not gonna be appropriate even later in the summer. So rather than um, have people trying to, you know, extend their tuxedo rentals, or if people could take a dress back, we wanted to give that opportunity. So we've tried to be very clear uh, up here, up front, that proms will be canceled, they're not postponed. We wish we could have them, uh, but our focus is on graduation, um, and we've kind of had to move on from the prom idea. Um, let's see. Um, construction. Construction is still uh, going. It's, it's going really well across the district. So we have one new school that is scheduled to be open next week or next year, I'm sorry, at Stockton Junior High. It is on schedule. We do anticipate that it will open in August. Um, it, the latest pictures that we've seen, it's moving right along very well. We're very thankful for our planning and construction department and all of the other work that we've anticipated throughout the district is moving on as well. We actually um, just approved a, a large addition to York Junior High that was approved by the voters uh, in the bond package and that work will begin this summer as well. Uh, so we, in a few cases, we may actually get a head start on some work that we would have been waiting on uh, until school uh, was physically out. We, the construction companies may actually get to start a little early. So construction is actually an area that we, that we feel pretty good. Um, let's see. Will kids on track to letter and academics still get to letter? Yes, that shouldn't change. I mean, it'll be the, the same process uh, as we get into next year. Uh, there'll be an evaluation of GPA just as it's outlined, and if you have earned an academic letter, then you would still be able to earn your academic letter for next year. Um, how do students get transcripts or VOEs? Uh, at this point, you'll need to email. If you need a VOE, you need to email your campus. All the campuses have an email address right on the front of the um, of their web page. Email that to let them know you need a VOE and they may be able to schedule you a time to come in and pick that up. Transcript requests, I believe you can go to Naviance and put that in now, but if you have any questions about that, email and they'll be able to help you. That'll be one of those things that when we move to limited operations and we have more people in the building, um, we'll still be asking you to set an appointment because we just won't want everybody to be able to flow in we're going to be uh, having set and staggered times so that we don't bunch up a lot of people, but we'll be able to serve you a little better once that happens. Um, well, this one's this one's very uh, hits home for me as a parent of a rising senior. Um, where can parents and rising seniors get guidance on the college application process, SAT, and letters of rec? All of our counselors are working. The college and career counselor. Um, at your high school is working and they will be sharing information with you. So Naviance is a great tool. You can go in, you can see everything now, um, but they will be sharing more and more information with you. We know that those college applications will open uh, as we get into August and, and you're going to late July and you're going to be ready to start that process. So look for information from your college and career counselor. If you have specific questions, please email either your uh, student's assigned counselor or the college and career counselor 
uh, at your student's high school and we'll make sure to get you that information. Will there be meet and greets or transition activities for students that are moving buildings? We are going to do everything that we can to make the end of the year special. Now, what will that look like? I don't know that it's going to be appropriate to bring people physically together. It, it doesn't appear that that's going to be the case. Even if we move to phase two of the governor's plan, I don't think it's in, you know, it's in his plan or his strikes force plan for us to bring up four or 500 fifth graders or fourth graders and, and do activities. But know that all of our campuses are working on uh, making the end of the year special as it always is, but it will just be special in a different way. So some of these different activities that may have happened are going to happen virtually, uh, or there may be different things that are going to occur. Uh, your principals are working on all that now, and they'll be sharing that information with you. And that's a variety of things that, you know, some campuses do a fourth grade clap out for the fourth graders as they're going to leave to go to intermediate school. Well, maybe that can be done virtually. Um, you know, we've, we've had questions previously about kindergarten graduation. Well, that, we know we're not going to be together for that. So, um, but is there a slideshow that could be done? Maybe. That's what campuses are working on uh, to determine how that might work. Um, let's see. How can you donate to the food bank? I believe the food bank is still doing their virtual food drive. So you can go to the food bank's website. Uh, they have a Facebook page as well. And you can donate money directly to the food bank. We talked about last time... Um, the food bank is way more efficient with cash than we are. Uh, they, they just have the ability to make purchases um, and, and their dollar stretches much further. So it's, uh, it's more useful to donate money to them than it is to try to donate food to them. So, uh, and it's just safer at this point. So if you'd like to go on, you can do the virtual food drive and donate money to the food bank. And that would be great. Um, once again, how long will distance learning continue? It will continue to the remainder of the school year. So our final day of school is May 28th. So we will continue our distance learning and it may begin to look different as we get further into May. Once again, you think about what is a normal school year look like as we get to that last week of school, we start to do some different award ceremonies and some different programs and things like that. You will see a natural transition um, into those activities as we approach the end of the school year, as your teachers will begin to transition from their weekly lesson preparation and delivery and evaluation to uh, spending a little more of their time um, preparing for those special activities. So you'll, you'll see that transition uh, as we continue. Will next year start with remote learning? We don't know that yet. Um, the, right now, we assume the school year will start as normal, but once again, we don't know what the future holds. We will be prepared if that's what is necessary. Um, we're talking about that already. We're buying more and more technology devices as needed. So we're going to be prepared. We hope that we're going to start the school year uh, with students in the building. And we've not been given any information to tell us that that won't happen. Uh, but we just don't know for sure what the future will hold. But we'll be ready. If we have to do remote learning, it'll look a little different. That's part of what we all have to understand about the future of remote learning, be it uh, a parent's choice to, to, to go through remote learning or if we have to transition to remote learning uh, into the future, we'll be more prepared for it. Uh, it will likely be more rigorous. It will likely you know, be more tied to grades because we, you know, let's say if we had to miss a month or two of next year, you know, we're gonna have to have that accountability piece at some point. So. Uh, it'll look different if we have to do it, but we'll be ready if, if it's necessary. I do want to remind everybody that we post FAQs from this video on our, on our Facebook page. So you can go to that. Or if you have friends that you know, just don't have time to sit and watch this video or just choose not to, we post the FAQs and that will be there and folks can go. We're also working on a potential way to index these videos a little bit where we can uh, help people jump directly to the topic that they may be interested in. So um, that, that's something that we're working on as well. I think that we have answered most of the questions. Um, once again, if you have any needs, communicate directly to your campus. That's the, the, the best place to do so. Okay, you can reach out directly to your campus. It might be um, educational needs, but it might also just be needs within your family. Uh, we have folks on the buildings that can help you get whatever it is that you may need to help support your family or help tie you into organizations that can help you. I um, hope you have a wonderful week. 
We'll be back together next Tuesday. It'll be May. We'll already be in May next week when we come back together, and, and that's exciting, and we'll be having our salute to education. Uh, we hope that you're able to join us then, and we'll celebrate um, so many people that make our schools and our community great. So thank you all for joining tonight. Please be safe.